The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. Happy Feast of the Most Holy Trinity to everyone. And in today's responsorial psalm, we said, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. So this is in reference to God's people of the Old Testament and also the New Testament. It was a massive blessing to belong to the people of God in the Old Testament because you have religious truth, okay? You have God who is leading and guiding you on your journey through this world. God who is blessing those who are faithful to the covenant of old. And we are even more blessed to be the Lord's chosen people now in the New Testament times, in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the fulfillment of of the people of God of the Old Testament. Whereas in the Old Testament, there was the sign of circumcision as an indication that you belong to the people of God. So in the New Testament, we have this indelible mark on the soul, which is um, given or imprinted during the sacrament of baptism that our Lord mentions in today's gospel. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so this is the missionary mandate of the church, that all peoples now are called to belong and to be blessed and to be the chosen people of God in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And you enter the church through baptism as through a door. So look at today's first reading where Moses is telling the people of old how they need to recall the marvelous and wonderful works that God has done for them, the signs that they saw with their own eyes when they were miraculously liberated from slavery in Egypt. And he says, what other nation has a God like this? What other nation has seen signs like this? And we, as the new people of God, can say to Moses, that was nothing compared to what was to come, what was in God's plan. How about things like the incarnation, redemption, and the Eucharist? How about the signs we have like the tilma, the shroud, and the miracle of Lanciano? Like, nothing in the Old Testament compares to these things. Moses talks about how close the Lord was to his people of old. How about God becoming man in the womb of the Virgin Mary and walking among us? Moses talks about how much love the Lord showed for the people of old by freeing them miraculously from slavery into Egypt. How about God made man redeeming the world on the cross? Incomparable love. Moses talked about the presence of God among his people in the pillar of cloud during the day and the fire at night. Well, today we have the Eucharist, the real, true, substantial presence of God, body, blood, soul, and divinity in our midst. Moses talked about signs, the parting of the Red Sea, and God fighting on behalf of his people. Well, as I mentioned, we have the tilma of Guadalupe, the ongoing miracle of that tilma. And as I mentioned, that is a sign of the incarnation because 
there have been um, those who have uh, listened close by to the womb of Our Lady on that image and could hear the heartbeat, right? Hear the heartbeat of the Savior to whom she is to give birth. That is the symbol of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Mother of the Lord, the Mother of the Redeemer. We have the Shroud of Turin as that ongoing sign of the work of redemption, the path, death, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we have miraculous signs of what we already know by faith of what takes place when the priest pronounces those words of consecration over bread and wine. We have Eucharistic miracles that have also been scientifically studied and reveal that this is cardiac tissue, tissue from the heart, and we have matching blood types and all of those things. We have living uh, elements. This, these are living miracles. So we have incredible and marvelous signs. And what is the conclusion that Moses makes after this little exhortation to the people? He says, this is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below. Now, because we have received so much more in the New Testament times, those words apply to us more so. This is why we must now know and fix in our hearts that the Lord is God in the heavens above and the earth below, and that there is no other. And as a conclusion, Moses says that you therefore must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today. So that's the same thing for us. We must keep his commandments. We must be faithful to our baptismal promises, our marriage vows, our religious vows, and these type of things. So that you and your children after may prosper and that you may have long life on the land. Notice these are temporal promises because our promises are eternal. That we may have not merely a long life, but eternal life in our heavenly homeland. So everything that has gone before, everything that has preceded and that Moses is boasting about to the people of old, you just have to bump it up, not merely a notch, but way up when it comes to what God has really done and fulfilled in the New Testament. He has revealed himself fully to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What was only veiled in the Old Testament has now been revealed because God wants, to, wants greater intimacy with his people, greater relationship among his chosen people. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. We are much more blessed today because we are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.